Welcome to the Zero to 60 podcast. I'm your host and local gearhead, Mark Arson. This podcast is designed to be a place where you can learn about some of the newest, coolest cars, trucks, and SUVs hitting our showrooms around the Leith Automotive Group and get the scoop on the automotive must-attend events in the Carolinas and Virginia. Now, if you haven't done so yet, please follow us on social at Leith Cars and keep our website handy, leithcars.com. In episode 49 of the series and eighth podcast of 2020, we're featuring one of the most iconic European sports sedans of all time, the second generation three series by BMW. LeithCars.com zero to 60 with automotive journalist and radio host Mark Arson. For today's episode of Zero to 60, I'm visiting with the owners of a classic 1985 BMW 325e, whose car you can see in our Zero to 60 TV series on YouTube and at LeithCars.com. Now, the second generation 3 Series epitomized the European compact sports sedan in the 1980s and helped put BMW on the map in the U.S., And the 325E we're featuring for this episode is a bit of a lesser-known model than the more familiar 325i. The E, which stands for efficiency, featured a less powerful inline six-cylinder engine than the power plant found in the 325i, but produced more torque, 177 pound-feet at just over 3,000 RPM. Now I'd like to welcome to the Zero to 60 podcast by LeithCars.com our guests, Julian and Liz, who are the owners of today's featured car, the 1985 BMW 325e. Hey, Mark. Glad to be here. Mark, it's so nice to have you here. So I know this car has a great backstory. So Liz, take us back in time. Uh, I guess I should first ask you, how long have you owned this 1985 3 Series? We bought this uh, E30 in 2012, but I have to say that I owned a 318 and bought it in 1983. I've actually owned BMW since 1973, uh, starting out with the 2002, a second 2002. And as soon as I saw that new 318, I fell in love. And that car, uh, we got the second one to enter the state of Kansas. We bought it in Topeka, Kansas. And I drove that car for 12 years and just loved it. And that's kind of why we ended up with this E30 1985. We were looking for a 2002. We wanted to pick up a vintage car. But then we got to talking around and a lot of rust problems. So I suggested to Julian, why don't we look at an E30? Because I love that 318. And lo and behold, he started looking and found it. Well, so let me, let me follow up with that, uh, Liz. So it sounds like, you know, from what you're saying, you, you had the experience of owning one of these three series cars yes. when they were new they back were in the day. Just released in 1983. <laughs> So, Julian, that's where I guess you come in, uh, because as Liz, you know, had spotted this car being out there, you swoop in to check it out. And and how did that transpire? Because it wasn't close to you. Is that right? Uh, One of my favorite things to do early in the morning is to is to hunt. And I hunt cars and I do that by hunting Auto Trader, eBay, your website, and especially bring a trailer. And I was on eBay and I saw this car. It just shined at me. It said, look at me, look at me. So I looked at it. And fortunately, whoever took the photographs, instead of having a front license plate, it had a dealer plate with their phone number on it. I decided I'd call them up and ask them what they wanted, wanted to sell it for rather than me bidding on it. And the guy said, okay, if you want to buy it, uh, that's fine, but here's the price. I said, well, I would like an opportunity to have a pre-purchase inspection. And, he, and this was in Denver, and I'm in Raleigh. So he said, well, I'll give you a list of five that we recommend, and you can call them and set it up. But if you don't want to send a deposit, I need to get this underway now. So I called up the local BMW CCA representative, and he was in 
Matthews, North Carolina, who suggested I call the president of the BMW Club of America, <laughs> whose last name was Hazard. And he, I called up his cell number, and he answered the phone very softly. He said, hello? And I said, I hate to be bothering you, Nick, but uh, I'm a member in Raleigh, and I need a recommendation of a good independent BMW mechanic in Denver. And he said, I'll call you back. And I said, fine. <laughs> said, That'll be fine. And I said, where are you? He said, I'm in Biltmore, the Biltmore house in Asheville. And I said, well, that's great. You'll enjoy that. Call me back. So he called me back, and uh, he said, there's one guy we all go to. He's just an amazing man. In contact with the mechanic, he said, hey, I did the pre-purchase inspection on that car for the bank because it's a part of an estate that is selling. And he explained that to me, and he said, I'll send you about 65 digital images, but let me tell you, that car is a unicorn. Now, that was the first time I'd ever heard that opinion of an automobile, but I said, what do you mean? He said, there aren't any. And this is just like a new one. It smells new. It's still got the all the factory uh, tabs where they put them together by hand. It's just an amazing little car, but it is a 325E, which means ETA. Do your research on that. And it is an automatic. I looked at the photos, uh, called up the guy that was selling it and said, how did I send you a deposit? And then that Liz was in Baltimore, we did it all by fax. (laughs) (laughs) But it's been a sweet car. Uh, We bought it with 32,000 miles and it's got about 43 on it now. So quite the story, uh, especially remarkable. Uh, it sounds like since you were able to get a hold of uh, the president of the BMW Club of America, not just the local chapter or state chapter, but of the national, he happened to be in our state, but then he had a contact back in, in Denver uh, that could actually go around and mechanically check out the car. So uh, that must have given you peace of mind uh, and making the purchase, right? Absolutely. And the, the gentleman was very nice. And I, I said, look, you've spent a lot of time with me on the phone and you sent me a lot of documents and so forth. But how can I reimburse you? What's your fee for pre-purchase inspection? He said, no, I'm just going to pay it forward. I said, what do you mean? He said, I, and he told me his story about some tragedies in his life and how they turned around for him, and he just felt like he had to pay it forward. I said, well, i tell you what, what's your favorite restaurant? I'll get you a gift certificate to that, and you can take your wife on a birthday or an anniversary. He said, no, I, I'm not going to accept anything except a thank you. So that, uh, you know, I would like to think speaks volumes about anyone who uh, currently owns a BMW, maybe thinking about owning a BMW, whether it's a, uh, a current model or, or recent, or maybe it's a classic uh, like, like the one that we're talking about today on the podcast, you should seriously look at joining your local chapter of the BMW Car Club of America. And, and here in, uh, in the Raleigh area, I guess that's the Triangle chapter. Is that right? Yes. And uh, the president of our, our chapter, his name is Rob McIsaac. So what's uh, what's the contact info if someone would like to join the Triangle Chapter of the BMW CCA? TarHillBMWCCA.org. Julian, Liz, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the Zero Sixty Podcast by LeithCars.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mark Arson. Thank you for listening to the Zero to 60 podcast by LeithCars.com. It's a monthly series bringing you the latest news around the Leith Automotive Group and the world of cars and motorsports throughout the Carolinas and Virginia. You can find Zero to 60 on multiple platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcast, just to name a few. Zero to 60 is a production of LeithCars.com. Like us on Facebook at Leith Cars. The copyright in this podcast and its contents belongs to Leith Incorporated. For more Leith Cars videos, including zero to 60 episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow Leith Cars on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.